Hey y'all, sorry I haven't been keeping as on schedule as I thought it would. Insert all the usual excuses about school and other projects. Also, I apologize for any background noise you might hear. I don't have a dedicated like soundproof studio or anything fancy like that. And I live in the middle of the city, so there's bound to be the sound of like the metro or like a siren in the background. Anyway, I was thinking about a topic for my next speed paint as well as what subject I wanted to draw. And I realized I should try to redraw some of my earliest digital pieces that, you know, aren't furries. I mean, furries, they're, I guess they're fun to draw and all, but mostly I do humans these days and drawing people would be a lot easier for me. Um, this latest speed paint came as a sort of package deal because it both provided me something to draw and something to talk about. If you know anything at all about the fandom this guy's from, you'll know exactly what I'm referring to. Cringe culture. Generally speaking, it takes people by storm when they're just hitting high school and wanting to distance themselves from like their middle school persona things. I was really no exception to that. Um, cringe culture has a lot of subsets within it, but it generally ranges from hating on Mary Sue's to laughing at people who genuinely enjoy stuff like Five Nights at Freddy's or Fortnite or something. In my personal experience as well, the uh, general demographic of people who believe in cringe culture are high schoolers and adults who never learn how to leave other people alone to just have their fun. In essence, confused teens and people who never grew out of that confused teen stage. Obviously, I have a lot to say about cringe culture, and dare I say that cringe culture itself is a little cringy? Hmm? As someone who used to be really into it, I can say now that it's actually a really toxic mindset to be entering into. Uh, spending my time online picking apart other people's characters or laughing at kids for like Fortnite dancing or whatever, it just isn't a very good use of my time, especially when a lot of these people never really asked for that sort of criticism. Generally speaking, these so-called bad OCs were made for fun, and most importantly, this person made it for themselves and not for you or for anyone else. It's really self-centered to expect everyone to be creating characters that specifically cater towards an audience that shouts out arbitrary standards that are honestly more based on bringing down the creator than actually giving constructive criticism. In fact, cringe culture is the opposite of constructive. Cringe culture is destructive, even if the most popular excuse is you're online, you should be able to take criticism. No, it's not that they can't take criticism. How about you take my criticism and stop bullying children? And yes, it's usually young creators that are being targeted because their art skills are not yet refined and they're out to have fun and are exploring all the different concepts available to them in the world of character creation. Honestly, who cares if their OC is like a demon, cat, angel, vampire hybrid or whatever it is? I certainly don't, and really you shouldn't either. I just ignore it, and if they ask for advice, which they usually don't because they're kids, you know, whatever, I, if even if they did, I would offer it in a kind and constructive manner rather than telling them you suck, go die. I'm paraphrasing, but like, I'm sure you'll be able to find this exact sentence somewhere in DeviantArt, at least 20 times being parroted by like five different people. Or more, usually more. Anyway, constructive criticism is about helping someone get better, not brow bashing them until they get like, frustrated and finally bow to your arbitrary and often shallow standards of what makes a supposedly good character. But this is really, all I've really talked about so far is the world of art. What are other hobbies, like playing Fortnite or listening to Matt Pat's FNAF theories over and over again, or I don't know, liking Steven Universe or drawing in the same art style, or really things like enjoying anime such as Italia or being a furry. All these interests have been the target of cringe culture in some way, shape, or form. And let me tell you, it's not fun to be interested in something that everyone else makes fun of. It makes you kind of feel like garbage, and it ruins your ability to trust people online. Plus, things come in and out of popularity anyway, like Minecraft? Minecraft was the subject of cringe culture for so many years, but then now everyone's bringing it back and having fun, and they're remembering how much fun they had playing Minecraft as kids. I think it's really important to remember that, like, the people that are participating in these events that you say are so cringy that you can, like, that you, like, physically react to it. It, it. The important part is that they're all having fun, just like the way you probably did when you enjoyed these, probably the same things when you were younger. And they really, these people are really just out here to have fun, and they aren't hurting anyone by doing these things. And before one of someone inevitably sarcastically comments, well, they're hurting my eyes. I want to raise this in response. Have you ever considered pressing the little X button on the tab or like Command Q or Alt F4 on like the browser? It might help lessen your supposed suffering. Like yes, I have fandoms that are pet peeves of mine that I just don't want to see anywhere ever. 
Yes, I get annoyed sometimes by kids who make OPOCs and try to pass them off as like God's gift to humanity or something. But I also know that they're here to have fun, just like me. And since I actually understand the concept of empathy, I leave these people well enough alone and go off to do something that I enjoy rather than putting down someone else. The simple act of shutting up has brought so much more net happiness in the world than typing a nasty, nasty like comment. Because in the end, who are you really making happy? Nobody. You get like a brief five seconds of like vindication and then it either dissolves into like some kind of fight or you get banned from the community. Seriously. If people just practiced, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything, the world would be a much nicer place and toxic ideologies like cringe culture would not exist. At this point, I've used the word toxic a bunch of times. I'm well aware that it's a buzzword that people use to shut down any and all arguments, but in this case, I'm not just using it because it conveniently gets people's attention. I'm using it because it's true. The definition of toxic in the context of online communities is someone or something that causes and or spreads hate. In this case, it's absolutely true. Cringe culture is based purely on hate. There's not really nothing else to it. Cringe culture hates Mary Sue's, hates cringy fandoms, and hates cringy kids. That's pretty much it. If the sole purpose of an entire subculture is to hate, what does that say about the people who participate in it? I'll leave that up to you to decide, because I feel like I've made my opinion of this very, very clear. My point is that cringe culture is toxic and only serves to stifle the happiness of the people who are participating in these so-called cringy activities. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. I don't think regular uploads are going to be possible during the school year, but I'll certainly try not to go months again between uploads.